Ibra di testa, Tonali, gol! Sandro, meritato! Sandro, Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Sempre Milan podcast. I'm your host, Oli Fisher, joined once again by Anthony Torgrud. What's up guys? Uh, glad to be back. I've returned after a week's absence. Um, yeah, I went to uh, Universe Studios, had a little vacation, had, had a lot of fun, and uh, now I'm here having more fun. So cheers. Uh, we got Madison as well. I was going to try and copy what you said, but you said way too much. Exactly. Hey guys, happy to be here <laughs> after a week off. <laughs> Wait, you were you not on last week? No, I was copying yeah, was. you. Oh, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's great to have the the OG trio back together. Um, I must apologize because one, I've put a mint in at the wrong time, so I can't really talk properly. Uh, and also, I'm feeling very ill at the moment, which may come across in my voice. So I'll talk a bit less, and that is no doubt good news for Maddie, who has a job. Um. So yeah, boys, let's di- let's dive straight into it. Maddie said before we started recording that he wanted to do the trivia first. So we're going to do the trivia before the start of the main episode. Um, we've got a little ticker that's going to go across the bottom of the screen if you're watching on YouTube. Um, if you if you're on Spotify or whatever, um, apologies. Uh, but there is a list of names of everybody who got the trivia question um, right for last week. Uh, and the answer to the question, it was an €18 million Euro signing from Real Betis. It was Ricardo Oliveira. Uh, and the extra bit of trivia that was that his season was disrupted because his sister got kidnapped. Um, so that was, you know, a few people got that. A few people chimed in with that. Um, so congratulations to everybody who got it right. Um, we're thinking about doing something giveaway related with trivia. Um, but we'll see how it goes maybe over the next few weeks and see how many entries we get, etc. before we decide on something to do for that. Um, but yeah, thank you to everybody who entered and uh, everybody get entering this week. The question is, what was Milan's record in the 2003-04 Champions League group stage? So we're looking for wins, draws, losses uh, out of the games that we played. Goals for, goals against and, and points. Um, so yeah. Get that in there. We're going to maybe make them a little bit harder as we go on each week. That might be fun because people are finding it pretty easy, it seems, at the moment. So, yeah, get entering via the usual methods. Either leave a, a comment on YouTube. Uh, you can reply to our tweet on Twitter. Um, and, of course, you can send via email if you want to do it that way. Some people have been doing it that way. And, yeah, we appreciate all the entries. Right, boys, we've got a lot to get through this week. Um, the the um, pre-season... Uh, campaign came to an end, technically Saturday and Sunday. I mean, some people were saying Saturday was the final proper friendly of the season, given that the Sunday game was like a, a bit of a Milanello training game type thing. But we played Vicenza in Vicenza on Saturday evening. Um, it was another very comprehensive victory, which we should probably expect against that level of opponent. I do find it strange that we went from... Um, ZTE to Wolfsburg to Marseille and then we dropped back down to Vicenza like normally you would think you ramp up your level of opponent getting towards the like interplay Villarreal for example and they've had a dreadful pre-season by the way um, but yeah we won 6-1 Rebic got a brace um, I think everybody looked pretty good to be honest there was nobody who stood out as being absolutely awful um, and I guess the main two talking points from the game were CDK making his debut. He played 15 minutes and he either hit the post or didn't hit the post, depending on what you believe. <laughs> um, that's, that's a little in-joke for this debate that ensued in the Sem Premier League group chat after that penalty that wasn't called for a blatant handball. Uh, and then Sandra Tonali limping off with um, with a, a, a flexor, a flexor, flex and muscle problem which we have since found out is just a day-to-day thing and he won't be out for weeks, which is good. Um, you boys watch it, and if so, what did you think? Yeah, I, I watched um, from start to almost finish. As as a, I watched as much as you were allowed to watch. Um, I guess Tropical Storm rolled into Vincenza and, and Milan lost the feed, so everyone who was watching anywhere in the world uh, did not get to see, um, I think, like the final, what, 10 minutes of the game? So we got... Uh, yeah, 10, 15... Yeah, so I think CDK came on at the 75th minute, and yeah. we lost feed around like the 79th minute. So no one really saw his debut, um, but that's okay. Um, the first minute, I mean, we conceded in, I believe it was 22 seconds, which mm-hmm. was pretty comical. You know, I, I had the game on, and my girlfriend was leaving the house, and so I walked to the door, we're saying goodbye, 
And then I hear, oh my God, they conceded already. And I look over, it's like, we just conceded in 20 <laughs> seconds. Yeah. And um, you could tell it was just kind of like a oops, you know, like it, it looked, uh, look, I, okay. So, Fisher, you think it was Tamori's fault? I lean more towards Calabria, but yeah, overall, it looked like all the, the uh, all, all the guys just kind of looked at each other and had a little chuckle. Like it wasn't yeah. that big of a deal, you know? They're just like, ah, you know, whatever. But yeah, yeah so they all weren't too worried about it and it showed because we bounced back with six you know uncontested goals right after so um easy game pretty pretty straightforward but it was fun to watch while it was on yeah i think um yeah i'm, I'm like 50 50 on what it was i do think calabria should have prevented the cross or should have perhaps done better to cut off the supply or at least force him into making a bad cross but he did uh did allow him to put in a beauty of a ball and it was a good ball into a dangerous area but yeah i think tomorrow he loses his man and it was a it was a nice glancing header, I suppose. But yeah, you're right. It was almost like a, oh no, never mind type thing. Um, yeah. And then we just took the ball back to halfway. And and yeah, it, I think we're at the at the point as well with pre-season, having had the good results against the stronger sides like Cologne and like Marseille, where um, realistically it's just finishing touches on certain things. Yeah, it's not nice to concede a sloppy goal, especially within 25 seconds, because better teams therefore will look at the weakness and think, can we exploit something there? But Really, it was just about ensuring that the attack kept flowing and the goals kept coming. I think I think I read that we scored twenty two goals in pre season, yep. if you count the official friendlies, um, and that is that is good news. I mean, plenty of the boys were firing. Um, you look at um, Macias, Rebic, um, Giroud ended up as the top scorer, I believe, with four goals in pre season. Uh, uh, Macias and Rebic with three. CBK, I think there was a few people on four goals, weren't there? Is there? Yeah, I don't know. I haven't actually totted it up yet properly, but um, but yeah, basically, bottom line being that um, fair few of the forwards got got firing. Um, yeah, Macias, Giroud, and Rebic were all on four. Right, excellent, and um, and there were plenty of positive signs from from those attacking players. In addition to obviously Yassine Adli, who got the one goal, but um, showed plenty of promising signs and got several assists, so that was good, and. Um, yeah, I don't know really what to say. I mean, I thought the actual occasion itself was quite good. Like, it looked a near enough full house at Vicenza's uh, stadium. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, there was plenty of Milan fans there. Obviously, there was a lot of shirt signing going on. And there was that kind of pre-season feel to it, which is always good because you don't always get that with the friendlies abroad. You know, they can feel a bit soulless sometimes. Not necessarily like the International Champions Cup as it was and stuff, but... You know, you're rocking up in Hungary and Austria and places like this, and it it, it doesn't really have the same buzz to it. I think. It's yeah, I think so. those games just kind of um just attract fans of the game more so than fans of the team. And, yeah, and that's fine. You know, everyone should have the right to watch a game and in person if it's there. You know, but yeah. yeah, it definitely it's not the same atmosphere, and that's understandable. Yeah, um, and then we had the game uh, yesterday against oh. What they call per- Perlo Gattese, I think something like that. Uh, yeah, per- um, I, I hadn't heard of them before, and that <laughs> you know that's <laughs> rare. Like normally, you've heard of some of these teams um, that we play against earlier in preseason. But yeah, we decided we needed that Sunday game. It was arranged fairly late, from what I gather, um, and yeah, we won seven one in that as well. So it was another dominant performance, as is perhaps to be expected. We weren't able to see this one because it was behind closed doors. Um, I don't know if there's any reason behind that, whether it was because, you know, they, they didn't think it was worth setting up the equipment for and broadcasting it, or whether it's because we actually tried something different out tactically that we didn't want to be broadcast to the public. I, I honestly don't know why it wasn't shown anywhere. Um, there were a few people asking about it, a few people that didn't even know the friendly was happening, and mm-hmm. uh, some people didn't know what time it was. So even though they knew the game was happening, they logged on in the morning and saw that we'd already played the game on one yeah, seven one. Yeah, that's how it was for me. I woke up yeah. and it was already over. I mean, the uh, again, the main headline from that is CDK. He scored a hat-trick. He scored a penalty. Um, and he scored with a left-footed shot and he scored with a header. That's all we know. Um, there are the uh, we know the penalty now. was a, a right foot. Yeah, so he right actually foot, had a perfect, so perfect hat-trick. hat-trick yeah. yeah, Interesting that, though, because he is left-footed and he took um to penalty with his right or foot. Maybe the penalty was left foot and then the other one was right foot. I can't I remember. I think he scored a perfect hat trick. So what the was shots... this? Yeah. I completely missed this. Yeah, it, it the game was at like three o'clock in the morning for us. Yeah, it was and an it early, was, yeah. early friendly. Um 
But yeah, we that's all we, we it just came out that we were five nil up at half time, and I think, and then we won seven one. So yeah, yeah, that's it. That is the final bit of of action that we uh, that we get before we kick off the season um, on Saturday against Udinese at home. Yeah. Um, so it's happy days from pre season. Really, it was only the blip in Austria that that sort of got the alarm bells ringing just a little bit. And as said, injury wise, we've done okay. It would have been nice to see a bit from Arigi. Um, but his his muscle injury really is dragging on now, and you got to wonder when it will actually be addressed. When we're is he going to be back return. for for the Udinese game or no? Apparently I know that not. was the original plan. Okay, apparently not. Um, it's funny because there was reports all those weeks ago from I think it was Gazetta saying he's going to miss the Udinese game, and everyone's like, "Don't be silly," you know. He's training with the team and stuff, but he's clearly so far behind in terms of his condition that we're not going to risk him, um, and that's fair dues. Yeah, we're, we're back to sort of relying on Giroud as our only centre forward going into the season. I think that's maybe why we managed his workload, for example. He he missed um, missed one of the friendlies. Um, he missed the one on Saturday, didn't he? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, that's where we're at heading into the season. Tonali day to day, he will probably miss this game against Udinese on Saturday, um, which is bad news and also... It, it's almost like a sigh of relief as well because I thought we'd be missing him right up until the derby and you don't yeah. want the derby to be his first game back. Um, so it turns out we'll probably only miss him for this one game, which is perhaps a bit of a silver lining to everything because it really did look like he'd he maybe partially torn or something the way he, mm-hmm. he hobbled off. Um, so Krunic will probably come in. Um Udinese, they're always difficult for us at home, or seemingly they're always difficult for us. Uh, we drew one all with them last season in a game where we really couldn't afford to drop points in the in the Scudetto run. Um, we dropped points and then Inter dropped points away at Genoa like a couple of hours later, so that kind of offset it. But yeah, they've been a they've been a bit of a thorn in our side in yeah. recent years of Udinese. We also find it difficult away. I mean, we scrambled a, a late draw last season there as well. Drew both games one one. Um, and and the what, season prior as well, we had to score in the ninety third yeah, minute, something like that. It's it's always been a late one, and there's always some controversy. You know, uh, yeah. Destiny Udoji scored with his hand that just didn't get called, didn't get reviewed last season. Um, there was some weird stuff with uh, um, what's it, success in the yeah, first one. Sure. Weird names, these guys, Destiny and Success. <laughs> and yeah, I hadn't them thought about that. Equalizing against us, but yeah, yeah there's he should have been sent off. He had like. A couple yellow carding fouls and some you weird stuff with them too, yeah. and yeah, and oh, and we had a goal called off that shouldn't have been as well, right, or something like that, or, or there was a yeah. penalty and then it it didn't get called and then they countered with it. I can't remember. There was some weird stuff in the late game of that one as well. Yeah, yeah, I'm really starting to hate that team. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, if there is a, a bright side, uh, Udoji's not going to be playing apparently. Yeah. Um, he's got a bit of a muscle problem, but also it might well be shielded because he's going to Spurs, yeah. which is interesting. You know, that's 25 million euros they're apparently paying for him. And there was talk of us signing him as a backup left back for, for like a few million. Um, but no, I think he'll probably be going to Spurs. He might even be a Spurs player by the time that we uh, we get around to this game. Um, I think it would be fair to say that the starting eleven with Tonali's injury kind of picks itself now for me, but the, there's already some murmurs. Um, the information that we have from the guys at sempermilan.it uh, is that Brahim Diaz is likely to get the start um, in the game on Saturday. Now, does that surprise me? No, because I do think there is still a... We have a longer integration period than most clubs in terms of getting new signings up to speed tactically and to be 100% conditioned. So maybe it might have been a bit much to expect CDK to be thrown into the starting lineup. I would like to see Nadley in there. Um, I feel like he's had enough time now, but Pioli is really, really meticulous in how the players have to be at 100% or they won't start. You know, it's as simple as that. So I'm not surprised to see that Brahim Diaz might be starting on Saturday. Um, I hope he doesn't. Uh, but everything else, I guess, is is pretty straightforward. Um, I wonder if we're going to see Adley and CDK come on, though. I assume that. Will. I think that we'd see Adley for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm thinking Adley like, might because... come on for Kroonich. That's what I think. I think he's going to play in the actual pivot. That, maybe, yeah. That, maybe that's CDK will to... come on on the wing then because. It's possible, too. Um, yeah. Unless he comes on for. Diaz. I think yeah, that's what I think. I think it'll be a late sub, like probably seventy fifth minute or a little earlier. 
CDK on for Diaz and I think Adley would come on for Karunic or or maybe even Adley would start over Karunic and you know is, is that what we tried in the friendly and and yeah. that's why we're keeping secretive or something I could see it that way yeah potentially I mean there's other options there's talk of a midfield three um mm-hmm. there's there's also talk of um potentially Pobega getting a start uh, in defensive midfield, which I can't say that I'd be a massive fan of, to be honest. Um, he's missed the last few preseason games due yeah. to a muscle problem. So that seems the least likely to me. Um, but yeah, the, the man who will not be mentioned throughout is Timu Ibakioko. And I think that this is a pretty damning indictment of how far down he is at this point. Um, we're still no, none the wiser to knowing where his future is going to be, but the fact that he's not even in the discussion to start a game uh, when we're missing Tanali shows, yeah, how bad things have got. For Especially him. when there's like almost no stakes. I mean, obviously every game is an opportunity for three points, but when it's the first game, you know, you, if there's ever a time where you can afford to drop some points, it's that one. So you would think, all right, if if he needs a game to prove himself, it would be the first game of the season. And if he's not even an option for that, it's like he's mm. not not in the point. I'm going to disagree because if we look at last season, there's never a game that you want to drop points. Yeah, fair enough. No, I agree yeah, with that. that was fast we statement. won the league by what two points? Hmm. Yeah, and if we uh, oh. didn't drop these bullshit points against Udinese, <laughs> we would have won. <laughs> yeah, well. uh, I think we 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 dropped points at home against Spezia when I believe Bakayoko started and got subbed off after forty-five minutes as well. Um, yeah, so yeah, I suppose there is there is form for it, but yeah, aside from that, um, Menyam will be in goal, obviously. Um, he had a pretty quiet preseason. It'd be fair to say. I mean, there weren't many teams who tested him, and uh, I don't think he made any howls. I can't. I can't uh, he, had he, he had one. Yeah, he had one that wasn't particularly brilliant early against on. whatever team beat us. A three-two. Zte zte. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't watch that one. I was out of town, and he yeah. uh, he didn't start either, so he didn't actually concede any of the goals. But when he did come on, he had a he went to make like a goal kick or something or it was a back pass and he went to just like clear it and he missed and it almost went into the goal behind him yeah yeah that's right yeah that's that's uh look fine it, it, he's okay he's the one who's probably the first name on the team sheet and for you know what reason. i bet bakayoko started that game too look it up yeah I'm I, going to. I think he did um, I guess Calabria will be at right back. Um, it'll be Tamari and Kalulu as the centre back pairing again. Teo Hernandez left back, and then we'll go with Krunic and Benacer for the moment. It was Brescianini uh, who started that that's game, the, and he yes. was responsible for, for yeah. two of them, right? Two of the three goals. Yeah, he yeah. lost his man twice. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, Benacer I think had a had a pretty good preseason. Um, there were a couple of games where he looked sloppy in possession, but in terms of his his energy levels and what he was contributing. Uh, on and off the ball, it was it was good. He was playing with confidence, and then I guess it's got to be Junior on the right hand side for me. I mean, yeah. Salamak has for all that the other forwards chipped in with goals or assists, some kind of end product in pre season. He's the guy who just didn't really do anything at all, um, and that is not a good sign either. Um, he, I, he had a I good think, ass- no, Brahim had a good assist. Man. He's uh, firmly second in the right wing hierarchy at the moment, and. Yeah. Maybe he might even be third if we do see CDKs being able to play there. Um, so that has got to bring question marks over his future and, and a potential sale. Who knows? Who knows what can happen in the last sort of three weeks of the, of the window? Um, and then, yeah, I mean, I would have Adley at number 10 to start if we don't think CDK is quite, quite there yet. Um, and then Liao and Giroud. So, yeah, the team does pretty much pick itself with this. Does, will Giroud not, be back? Yeah, Giroud will be back. Um, okay. He missed the game due to um, a bit of like, workload management. Yeah, more Which, so than fair anything. enough. I mean, he had to play the last like yeah third of the season. Yeah, um, I don't mind him missing that as long as he's he's back firing for uh, for the game against Udinese because we'll need um, all his experience and composure to break down a team that I reckon are going to come and sit pretty damn deep. Um, the hope is that going into that second game away against Atalanta, we we have um, a few more options in terms of competition like hopefully Origi's sort of back and and CDK and Adley are definitely up to full speed and Tenali's back and we just look a little bit deeper across the board but last season it was it was the same we never really had a full squad to choose from just hope we're not played with injuries again uh, last season Udinese finished 12th um, which feels very Udinese to me um, 
They were as high as fifth when they won two out of their first three games. They dropped as low as 15th, but they were pretty much just in and around the... Uh, they the were in table. fifth after five weeks? <laughs> in fifth after three weeks. And then they oh, dropped... two of their first three. I was like, man, yeah. two of their first five. How was that fifth place? Yeah, no, two of their first three. They drew against UV and then won the next two. And uh, But yeah, then they didn't move from 14th from between 14th and 12th from like halfway point in the season onwards. So that was a pretty boring campaign for them. Um, their their head coach uh, is Gabriele Cioffi. He replaced uh, Luca Gotti sort of midway through last season. Um, they have actually already played a competitive game this season. They beat Ferrell Pizzallo 2-1 in the Coppa Italia round of 64. Round of 64? That's a big round. I feel like it, it should be like preliminary stage one, two, three, and then right. like round of thirty-two. Um, so yeah, I mean, I don't have, I don't know of anybody who's tipping Udinese to go down this season. Um, uh, I have them tenth, honestly. I think they're yeah. Nor am I looking at their table. squad and thinking that it's particularly weak. They've actually got a few players in there that I, I quite like. I don't mind Ebersele. Uh, Massina is pretty good. Obviously, they've got Beto still who. Had a pretty good season last season for his first in Syria. Um, we've got to presume that Udoji will be gone, um, but they've got a uh, yeah, Makengo success. Uh, Bekao might be missing this game, apparently, I've read, which is good because he seems to score against us one in every two games. Um, so, yeah. What are we thinking, boys? Is it going to be a routine win to start the season or are we going to, uh, are we going to buckle under the capacity crowd? We're not going to buckle. A lot of the players who are playing played in front of this crowd last season. I think that um, it will be a 2-1 win, uh, but it's going to be a fight. I think we're going to score the first, they'll score the second, then we'll score the third. Hmm. I had the same score line, but I think it's going to go opposite order. I think they'll score first, and then we bounce back. I Just for whatever reason, we've been conceding early in preseason, and I know that's not much of a, a gauge, but it still is a gauge. And um, Udinese has been the team to kind of spoil the plans lately. But I do think we're finally going to get the better of them after three or four consecutive draws against a stupid team. I, I think we're going to be like, all right, let's actually put these guys to the knife. And it's going to be hard, but we're going to get the get the win. Yeah, I mean, I'm not necessarily sure that um, a 2-1 Coppa Italia win over a team that's in the... Uh, in the third tier, maybe the fourth tier, is particularly a massive confidence-inspiring, nor is the fact that they lost four of their last five preseason games. You can't take, obviously, huge amounts from results in preseason games, but if they're in the search for confidence, that probably mm -hmm. won't help. I'm um, basing it mostly off last season and the fact yeah. that you know all the, the changes we've made to like players bringing in aren't going to start. Mm. And you know, then it's like, okay, it's the same team. We know what they've done. And it's not like it was just a one-off thing. It happened twice, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go with a 1-0. I, I think, like you two, I think it'll be tight in terms of the winning margin. Um, but I do back us to keep a clean sheet in this. I do think Udinese generally um, have struggled in scoring goals against us. They've relied on hands and they've relied on set pieces and stuff. Um, and I'd back us to keep a clean sheet to start the season in this. That would be lovely. And um, I, I, I do think we'll find a way in the second half to score um, I will even add that it'll be Rafael Leal who will get our first goal of the season and um, our first match winner of the season. And yeah, fingers crossed because 70,000 odd expected at San Siro, which you'd expect to welcome the champions. You know, it'll be our first home game since we won the Scudetto, obviously. Um, and it should be a fantastic occasion overall. Um, and fingers crossed that we, we get the job done in front of the front of the home crowd because we need a bit of momentum um, heading into the Atalanta game second up uh but yeah let us know your predictions in the comments um we'll maybe we should highlight people who get it bang on that'd be good um we do that um what <laughs> okay what do you say i just, I just threw him off he said we you... do that like, oh yeah, yeah good yeah, yeah. great um now we're on to predictions i'm trying to find the uh find the banner for it but we didn't do it so i'm just gonna type it now um ah. we do this every single season Unfortunately, we do this every single season because we we tend to like have a pretty low strike rate with this. 
Um, I'm but, confident yeah, we, this year in mine. I'm glad you are. Um, so we're going to go down basically a list and, and make our uh, our predictions. There's going to be a mix of Milan-related ones and stuff for the league. We'll start with, with stuff for the league and we'll see how we get on. I mean, it's always fun to come back and laugh at these because some of them are spot on and obviously others are horrendous. Um, yeah. We had a bit of fun looking back at them in an episode late last season. So it's always a, it's always a good bit of fun. And also we do this with the uh, with the with the um, window. I'm trying to work out how many days. About twenty odd days away from being complete. So Milan should hopefully be signing a centre back and a central midfielder at least. So that might change where um, we think that they, they'll finish. And I'm sure there'll be some caveats to our picks and stuff like that. But yeah, just bear that in mind when we're talking about certain players who may then go on to leave certain clubs or whatever, like we did with the Ronaldo thing last season um, with Juve. So yeah, without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, where will Milan finish in the league? You just said it, number one. <laughs> I do think that we're going to be back-to-back champs. Yeah, I, I, I do too. I have a weird confidence for it, and last year I didn't. I thought we were going to finish fourth, I thought we were going to drop off, but same. I don't know. I think the unity of this team, I actually think less signings is an an advantage to us because it's the same team that gets it. They already know. My only worry is most of them are first time winners. So what if they get like a, a bravado to them? Like, a, yeah, we got this, which like we saw with Inter. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I think also looking at the way the other teams have kind of fallen apart. No, well, maybe that's harsh, but the way their, their transfer windows have gone, I, I think it actually puts us in a better position. Plus I think CDK over Brahim is going to, just bring alive the right wing, the striker, and the addition of Origi as a, a, a mobile striker or, or using Rebic there. Uh, I think it's just going to add a lot more goals, and you're going to see multiple goal scorers again each time. You know, you might you might have that one dude who who really excels on 15 plus 20 goals, something around there. But yeah. I think we're going to have more than likely 15 plus different goal scorers this season. I think everyone's going to find the net at some point. Yeah. You know, you say that. Inter fell off, but did they? Because if they Slightly. fell off, yeah, by two points. <laughs> yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I got a pretty good season considering everything. Considering yeah, I, they did. Lost. They did. I don't think that uh, Inzaghi, I think that Inzaghi started to lose it at the end of the season, and I don't see him picking it back up here. Um, and Lukaku plays played good under Conte, but. Then he played like shit at Chelsea. He didn't, I mean, he didn't really get a chance, but. Um, but he's been I, bad in preseason as well. Yeah, I I just don't see the comeback as good as the initial. Same. Oh, I, I don't either. It's almost impossible for it to be as good as yeah. it was like, the first was, time around. He was like, he unbelievable. Hit those levels. Yeah, he was unplayable on his day. Um, I've got, now, as I said at the start, I, I we can only judge on where the squads are at right now. My gut feeling is that Inter are going to lose a key piece between now and the end of the window. Be that mm-hmm. Skriniar, be that Brozovic. Dumfries, be that Brozovic, yeah, or Barella, or it could be anybody like that. Um, could or it be could two be two of, of them. them. Could be could two, be yeah, exactly. as well. I'm seeing links for him now. Yeah. Um, so, you know, the, the, there is that caveat, but I'm only judging it based on how the teams are at the moment and with us still a centre-back and a central midfielder short. Um, I'm I'm fairly damn confident that we're going to finish in the top two, um, but I've got a second behind Inter at the moment. Now, if we get those last two pieces and Inter lose key pieces, because I think they're done in terms of incoming business, then I'll flip it. Um, but just in terms of the two starting 11s that can be fielded at the moment, um, I don't actually think Inter have got a ton weaker. I mean, they've added Lukaku in place of Dzeko, which is an upgrade, regardless of if Lukaku has a bad season, he's going to get double-digit goals probably. Um, they've lost Perisic, which is big, um, and and that will be um, that will be something to watch. But they've got Robin Gosens, who we know is a reliable wing back, um, at least in terms of his output in Syria. Um, so I've got us, uh, I've got another tight title race as things stand at the moment. Um, but I've just got a second to Inter, and as I say, if if things happen in the market that I expect to happen, then I'll flip it round and I'll have us finishing first. Um, Scudetto winner, we've. We've just talked about it there. Uh, top four in order. So who have you got third and fourth? Oh, you don't want to know who I have second? Because it's not Inter. It's I, Juve. It's, it's Roma. Not Juve. It's Roma. Ah. I think Roma is going to be very good as well. 
Yeah, I, I have a weird hunch, man. I, I think the I mean, I saw that the ball corner kick yesterday that went out of bounds immediately, kind of like Honda's a, a few years back. But besides right. that, I mean, I saw some Lincoln play with him that was incredible. I think Tammy is a killer under Mourinho. Um, I think they've made really all the right moves and they just brought in um Winaldum and someone else. They just signed another guy. And uh, yeah, I think they're making they're gonna make a splash. And I think they're the the gap between first and where they finished last season is too large to make up. But I do think with the way Juve have played and with the way Inter have played in preseason and their their markets and their injuries already, I think Roma is going to be a step ahead of them. Um, I have Inter third, and I have Juve fourth because just watching the preseason, Pogba is going to miss probably the first half of the season. I know he's not going to miss the World Cup, but remember the first half of the season ends in November this year. It's going to be hard to see if he gets back from that knee injury. And you have Di Maria, who's good, but he's old. He hasn't done that well. You got Bremer, who has blatantly failed to adapt to a four at the back system right now. He's, I mean, he was almost responsible for for all of Morata's goals. They just conceded a hat tip trick to Morata, and he was definitely at fault for two of them. You could argue the third as well. So I, I think uh, Bremer's not the move. Um, I think he was one season wonder under a different system, and he's not going to adapt in time. And yeah, so I have Juve fourth. I have Roma in second, Juve in third, and Inter and Napoli are going to be fighting for fourth. But I have to bounce for like five minutes because someone just got here. So I will be back. I'm going to cool. try to remove myself and come back. Okay. Oh, we can block him. Can we come in back? Um, yeah, I, I've got uh, obviously. Um, us and Inter is the top two in whatever order. Um, I know that's cop out, but you know, um, the transfer market does change things. And then I've got Juve third at the moment. I'm not actually particularly confident with that pick because they haven't been good in preseason at all. You know, the, there's been a lot of growing pains from what I gather. And yeah, Bremer apparently had a disaster class against Atletico Madrid, which will worry them. I still think he'll be okay. I think he just does need that time to adapt to play the four-man back line. But if he's not okay, then that could be the difference between them. Um, you know, potentially being in a title challenge for a large stretch of the season versus just fighting for top four. Yeah. Um, I also think they might be a goal scorer short, to be honest. You know, Morata dunking on them like that actually ironically and cruelly showed them, you know, they, they do need a goal scorer. I think it shows you more their system because Morata was not putting them in last season. Yeah, yeah. And when Vlahovic got there, I mean, he started hot for two, three games, and then he kind of mm-hmm. sizzled out as well. So I, I don't know. I think I think Pogba is their their best signing, and with his meniscus injury, I know he's opted mm-hmm. against the surgery, which would have had him out till February. But you never know. It's I mean, risk. what if he he could reaggravate that in in November when he's supposed to be back? So it's mm-hmm. it's rough for him. I, I don't know. I think Juve is in a tough spot. Yeah, I mean that's yeah. because they they had a tough start last season and then they 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 ramped it up and they got going and you know they they kind of hung in there annoyingly till till the last few weeks of the season in yeah. terms of being talked about as title challenges. We need them to have another bad start because when yeah. they get going, they're tough to stop from a momentum point of view. And I think they will have a bad season. I, I think the question around Juve is not are they title contenders, but will Allegri survive the season? That's yeah. my question, I, and I don't think he even makes it to to the January market. I bet they're going to be spending a shit ton again in January, and it's going to start with the new manager. Hmm. Well, if they keep digging themselves a financial hole, then that would be great. Um, well, yeah, I've got Juve third, as I say, not entirely confident with that pick. I've got Roma fourth. Um, I think that they've improved significantly in terms of their squad. Um, but there's one thing that makes me feel so incredibly confident that they won't finish in the top two. Um, and that is that they do not have a defence. They are shit at the back. They, mm-hmm. they, and that won't change, you know. Good Mourinho teams are built from the back. And I cannot really believe that they've overloaded the squad with forwards. You know, that that to me seems strange. I think that they, they're probably one quality centre-back signing that may yet arrive, may, may still sign another centre-back, but I think they are one quality centre-back away from being taken seriously um, and being, like, comfortable top four over being in a battle. Um, and, you know, I know we'll come on to the 5th, 6th and 7th, but uh, there isn't an awful lot outside of those four teams, to be totally honest. Um, I mean, Napoli have been... I, 
I think they got ripped, ripped apart. apart. Yeah, totally ripped apart. I almost, I don't feel sorry for them because their fans are unbearable, generally speaking. But um, that is one way to go from a title fight to 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 drop yeah. it off a cliff. I, I do feel bad. Um, I think they made good signings. I just don't think that they've made good enough signings to replace what they've lost. You, know, yeah. you look at Mertens leaving, Insigne leaving, Koulibaly leaving, um, Ospina leaving. And it's it's Fabian scary. Ruiz now. Ruiz I mean, that gone is the now. Core. That is That's the center the of that one. team ripped out. That was literally the star in every level of the pitch yeah. gone. Yeah. So it's it's scary for them. It really is. Yeah. I do think um I'm I don't even I'm not gonna try and say his name, Kavichka, whatever. Yeah. Um he bought out in preseason. I only watched one of his games, but I was good. like, wow. I hey, think he'll good. offer he'll offer something similar to what Insigne did. Maybe not in yeah. terms of sheer numbers, but like he is a direct winger who'll mm-hmm. put in and try and score. And I do think that they need that because, you know, like a full season of Ossiman, maybe um, you're looking at increasing your goals output there. But yeah, just generally speaking, they, they really have significantly weakened in the yeah. spine of their team. I and do I think still Soleil's think they're stronger than the, the rest. You know, I think they're the best yeah. of the rest, but they're not the top. And that's kind of where they, that's why I have them fifth since we're just yeah. getting into that. Yeah. Yeah, we'll we'll do this now, and hopefully Maddie hops back on to do his fifth, sixth, and seventh. But you've you've just named your fifth there. Yeah, and um, then I have Fiorentina next at sixth, yeah. um, and Atalanta at seventh. I think they're going to do a little bit better, get back into the Euro spots, but it's just going to be Conference League. I don't think they're a, a, a real threat. Now I've got it almost the other way. Um, Atalanta aren't in any European competition, um, so I think they have a little bit of a bounce back season this season. I was surprised that they didn't change head coach, as weird as that sounds. Like it felt like the right time to maybe start a, mm-hmm. a new dawn, a new era, um, given how badly last season went. But they didn't do that. They chose to stick with it. And I think a bit of continuity will help them and they should have more gas in the tanks. I've got or them Gasparini. fifth. More Gasparini. Nice. Um, I've got them fifth. Um in sixth place, I've got Lazio. Um, I don't think that they've had a uh, a, an outstanding market by any means, but I also don't think that they've got loads weaker. You know, they've actually somehow managed to hang on to SMS mm-hmm. as it stands. Um, yeah. and, and I, yeah. I do think Roman Yuli, like his comments, he's, an, he's are probably right, right for him. Yeah, yeah, I um, think he is going to do better under a Sari system, but yeah, and I think Sari, um, he is the kind of head coach who needs time. Let's say mm-hmm. he bought himself that season, um, just to to get the team used to his ideas. And they did play some really good stuff at times and they scored a shed load of goals. Um, and I think maybe this season they click a little bit more. Um, so I've got them in sixth place and I've got Napoli in seventh um, because I think that they have dropped off um, quite substantially. But I do think that they'll they'll probably still have the goal scorers to uh, basically awesome them um, just to drag them up a level. I still like Zielinski. I think Kavicha can, can do well. I actually like Politano as well. Um, but yeah, I don't see them troubling the top four at all this time around. Could be wrong on that. Spalletti could pull out another masterclass. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, Maddy fifth, sixth, and seventh. So enter Napoli fifth. I'm not sure about them, but for fourth and fifth, uh, sixth, we'll go Lazio. And I don't know about that. Who cares about seventh place? It's conference league now. Yeah, basically, we're just like wondering how far you think Napoli are going to drop off, but you've already named them fifth. So yeah, I, um, I don't think that they're going to drop off that far. I I have to like look at the list of teams because I feel like Fiorentina is an interesting one. Um, if you want to reveal some insight on that, you think I have any insight on that? No, I meant AJ because AJ named oh. Fiorentina. Oh, I did. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I think they've uh, made some good good improvements. Um, yeah, and I like uh, the, I, I like Italiano as well. Yeah, the Italiano. Well, they did semi decent last season under him, mm-hmm. and I'm, I just want to pull up their transfers because there was a specific one where I was like, oh, okay, maybe maybe this is. I think they chance. fairly obviously dropped off in the um, Vlahovic to Cabral thing, and that's when they stopped scoring a shed load of goals. But yeah, um, they, I think Cabral's. Oh, they very, got Luka Jovic. I think Luka Jovic is going to do well. Um, mm. Madrigora always does a decent job. You know, I don't know how well he's going to do in this system as opposed to the Juve system, um, but he's solid. And yeah, I don't know. I think I, I think Luka Jovic is going to do good. 
that was really it. And then they brought in um, Galini and Dodo, but I mean, he's literally a Dodo. Dodo's good, actually, from Shakhtar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he's really um, good. Oh, that's a problem. Like the uh, not social not media like page, the Dodo. Yeah, just yeah. like that. Like the left back that Inter had all them years ago, Dodo. Oh shit. Um, Maddie, did you name sevens? You don't care. Is that what we came to the conclusion? Yeah, fair. Um, relegated teams. Now, this for me, I think we may all agree on this. I know me and AJ agree on this. I think this yeah. is nailed on. I actually looked at putting a bet on this, and mm-hmm. the odds were five times the money. Which for no, 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 the odds were three and a half times the money. Which is not which very for naming good. naming three relegated teams is just like no. Yeah. Um, I do have a couple of dark horse picks that I'm going to mention, but they're not necessarily what I believe. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, in order from 18 to 20, I put Sornitana, Lecce, and Cremonese. Mm-hmm. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if, like, Spezia sneaks down in there or something, or, or even Monza, to be honest. But I think as Milan fans, we all just kind of have a soft spot for them. So mm-hmm. I actually have them 17th, just above it. But I think Sornitana got really lucky at the end of last season to to sneak out of 20th and finish in 17th. And I just don't see him doing it twice. Um, Lecce is not a good team. I mean, they they been in Serie B for a while. I think Cromonese kind of has been on an upward trajectory. I think they were in Serie C fairly recently, but I, I just think it's, it's a different tier up in the mm-hmm. top flight. Yeah. I, yeah. like you said, I don't want to see Monza go down. Eight out of 11 starting new players, though, like... Yeah, it's go, a lot of turnover. Yeah, yeah it yeah. could go either way. Yeah. Probably self. Um, and it typically does, yeah. Salernitana. But then again, they've, they've got some good names in, like some Serie A proven names. Yeah, well, and we, so, Gally we got Gally some good names in too, and we freaking sucked when we like re- replaced our entire. Yeah, but Galliani mentioned yeah. that um, they're close to getting Nicardi, so that would be huge for a club like that. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to be paying his wages, but he, I think FFP is going to be yeah, he's going to be great on that. FFP part. only matters if you're in. European competition. They're not going to get a European place, That's so what the hell do they care? True. Yeah, true. Yeah, they just difference. spend what they want. Yeah. Oh, wild. Yeah. Um, I mean, it, it does still apply, but yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. Qualify. The sanctions generally only. Yeah. Aleche and I don't want to see Spezia go down, because that's where Maldini Danny, is. Yeah. 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 But yeah. I could see it his happening. debut, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It was a proper game as well. Mm-hmm. This was his know. debut. Yeah. So I'm gonna say Monza, Salernitana, and Lecce. I am. I I agree with AJ's three picks: uh, Cremonese, um, Salernitana, and Lecce. Salernitana were a bit of a fairy tale last season. They did well to. Well, in fact, it was a miracle that they avoided the drop in the end. And mm-hmm. fantastic work um, by them to do that. But I just think that it's going to be really hard to repeat that a second season because yeah. they're still way off. All of I don't remember. Teams the exact match day but it was like the match day prior to their like comeback towards the end of the season and it was late i want to say it was like match day 30 or something like that Mm -hmm. the odds of them surviving relegation were lower than the odds of leicester winning the prem that season that they did Oh, five thousand to one so it would have been higher than that yeah yeah i mean they were done they were completely dead and buried they were they had one win they were yeah 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 um I but the, the two the two twice. dark horse picks that I've got for relegation, if you if you bet in person um, and you like boosting the odds, I think Sampdoria, yeah, yeah, they they have lost players and they have not replaced them. Um, I think they're in a bit of trouble. Um, but I actually, I just think that they're the ones that are probably never going to go down in our lifetime. Like Genoa did it, you know, they were treading water for so long and they finally dropped. And that makes me think Sampdoria are just immune to it. Um, so I don't know. I'm I'm not picking them in my three, but I think as an outside bet, that might be solid. And the other one is Empoli. Um, mm. Empoli dropped off a cliff in the second half of last season. And it's a bit like the Southampton thing in the Premier League where, like, you think, oh, they'll be fine. But then you look at their form in 2022 and it's like, yeesh, that's yeah. not good. That can't carry on. Um, so we'll see. They, they look a bit short of goals to me at the moment. Um, right, the next one went on and, to the uh, Milan's. Oh no! Don't forget to add this segment to the article when you type it up. Mm-hmm. So, Maddie, well, I'm going to actually get yours written down this time. 
Um, that'll I'll be out be later this that. week. Shit, now we got our, we have to remember what we said like the, for the past 20 minutes. Well, if yeah. you believe in your picks, you won't have a problem with that. Because you'll just be going straight <laughs> to your gut again. I actually made a tier list of mine, so I, I got mine. Good. Um, Capo Canonieri, so the top scorer in Syria for next season. It's going to be a mobile, the fucking bastard. Flat track bully. Yep. It's going to get uh, 30 past Cremonese alone. <laughs> oh, really? First game in season. I like that. You're betting on me to win our bet. <laughs> well, only if he gets tw- 22 goals. You think Chiro's not getting at least 25? No, we bet on 22 goals. We didn't bet more or less. We bet, we bet goals. over 20 goals. I said. Well, you should probably I'll not bang on 22 goals. Yeah, generally yeah Matt, Matt likes to thing. move the goalpost as soon as he yeah. smells <laughs> a little fear. A little, bit like a current, a little bit of currency only, uh, manipulation. Only currency manipulation. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Who's got the worst exchange now? Actually, I think they're all relatively even at the moment. I think Except for really Oliver. Like, I, have not, I, I, I have not changed any of our bets. Yeah, I can't remember them, but I, I'll owe you some money. Um, hasn't the dollar gone above the euro for like the first time since? Yeah, in a like, while. A long time. Yeah. Um, top scorer for me, I've got Tammy Abraham. Um, I think he did really well in his first season last season, and he's going to be the focal point of Roma's attack. And I do think Roma are going to score plenty of goals this season. Um, yeah. Question mark still Have remain about whether they can keep him out. Yeah, he could look good. Zaniolo maybe back to hundred percent. Have you seen him? He's lost all of he his looks, bulk because yeah, Zaniolo say, he's he in looks, great shape. Yeah, um, so that could be a problem. But yeah, Tammy, natural finisher, the chances are going to be there for him. Um, and yeah, I mean, there's there's obvious candidates. You guys mentioned Immobile. Um, Vlahovic, if he can sort of replicate the fast start he had last season. Um, what worries me a tad is that there is just not a single Milan player that's in that discussion. You know, from Rafa, you're looking at like 15 goals would be a great season. And th- there's just nobody in that discussion. You know, we've not seen anything from Origi because of his injury to think he's going to, absolutely fly out of the traps so you know it comes back to that whole thing can you win the league again if you don't have a scorer with 15 plus goals um and we're, we're going to have to find out probably um yeah maddy did you say mobile he said origi oh origi. i thought i was a joke um <laughs> milan's top scorer then you've got divok origi uh so do i yeah. i guess yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with um, Rafa. I think I think Liao's going to build on his last season, and I think he's going to get 50. And I don't think we're going to get anybody who gets near to that. Um, not near to it, but like you know, ties him or anything like last season. Um, yeah, again, worries about our top scorer having 15 goals. Generally, you need someone better than that. You know, Inter could have two 20 plus scorers. Um, Juve yeah, could have. They could. I wouldn't bet against it. I yeah. would, but I think they could do it. Yeah. Uh, then we've got Milan's most assists. CDK, baby. Adley. That's a really good shout, actually. Mm. Thanks. <laughs> um, Raphael Leao, again. I think he's going to have both. Now, at CDK is, is a great shout, and Adley's a great shout. Those two have looked bright from what we've seen and we're all gassed about them arriving and stuff like that but it's just like how much are they actually going to start games in the first few weeks of the season and and Liao is the one who is the first and only certainty in on the team sheet and attack so that's the only reason that I've gone for him a bit of a safe pick. Uh, player of the season overall? I'm going Prince Charles once again. Origi because he's going to be the golden boot winner for the team and the league. Uh, I'm going to go Liel because if he has the most goals and assists, then... Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> yep. Uh, and our breakout player, Matteo Gabbia for me. Um, no, you joking. going with that? I picked again? that last year and uh, it didn't go great. Yeah. I'm going to go Adley. No, Origi. What am I uh, talking uh, about? He's going to be the golden boot winner, top <laughs> player on the team. And yeah. He's break out. No, I... I, I see breakout as like young players yeah, so I'm gonna yeah, go so. Adley. Yeah. Um breakout I'm gonna actually say Macias just because I think he's gonna have a, a much better season than last season based on mm-hmm. his, his preseason performance. So um yeah I, I think he might be up there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm gonna say Yassine Adley. Um I think he, he's gonna do well. That's about it. Um 
we'll move on to some listener questions. Maddie, you have to work. I'm gonna let you yep. I'm gonna let you duck out. Um but yeah, thank you for, for joining us. Um and see you in a week. Follow me on Twitter when it pops up. It won't. See you guys. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> You're right, I'm not gonna be here. So <laughs> see later. Right, mate, me and you to do some questions. Um we got quite a few. Oh, I hope people noticed the new questions graphic that I made. Um, I like to style it based on what okay. the season's home shirt's looking like, but I doubt people even took a second look at it. We got a lot this week, um, so we'll, we'll handpick some of them. Um, Karim asks, why do you think Ibra stayed? Surely leading a team from mid-table to a Scudetto was the best way to go. Um, I mean, so us as fans... We could think really logically about that, right? Like, oh, mm-hmm. 41, coming off multiple injuries, you accomplish this great, awesome task. But what we can't do is evaluate the human aspect of it from Zlatan's point of view. What we have to understand is that we're saying, when are you going to say goodbye to the defining moments of your life? You know, he, whatever he does after football is not going to be as big as what he did during football. Mm-hmm. So to tell someone, hey, it's time to stop, is pretty difficult, especially when it's, you know, a, a team sport. Like, obviously, it's physical, but it's not like boxing where you're getting hit in the face and people are like, you need to stop for your, for your health, you know. You're staying healthy because you're playing football. So, yeah, um, I don't know. I, I think it's it's really hard to say why. Maybe he wants one more go at the Champions League. Maybe he just feels he can still compete. Maybe he thinks he has something to give to this team. Maybe he wants to wear a jersey with two stars over the crest. You know, it, it could be any number of reasons, and I don't really think it's – up to us to to give him a reason or say he doesn't have one um yeah and as far as i'm concerned as long as he is adding something to the team which i think he has been and as long as his wage reflects his um playing contribution which it definitely is now um stay until you're 50 you know like it (laughs) it's it's really up to him it's up to him and as long as he is able to give something i mean he's still putting goals when he gets on the field and and regardless of if there is this beautiful fairy tale ending, most players don't get a fairy tale ending, and the opportunity to get one is appealing, but it's it's not the make or break to everyone. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I I think maybe in hindsight we should have known that he wasn't going to retire. Um, obviously, the surgery, the news of the surgery came after the last game of the season, but he would have announced if he was going to retire. You know, going mm-hmm. into that final stretch of the season, just to just to add a little bit more theatre to everything because that's the yeah. way that he does it, isn't it? But, um, I think a yeah, lot of that I, also I hinged everything. on World Cup qualification. Yeah, I think maybe, he yeah. wanted to give his shot there. Uh, and maybe that's what it was. Maybe he be, he was banking on that. That's why he didn't make an announcement. And then they didn't yeah. qualify. And then he's like, well, it's too late to make you know that, that announcement before the end of the season. So what's one more year or some, something? I don't know. It doesn't matter. Yeah. But, no, I totally agree with everything you said. I mean the human aspect of it. We have no insight into Zlatan's mind apart from we know that he's a ridiculously fierce competitor Mm -hmm. um, and it is tough for him to walk away from anything. Right. Um, I mean, most people retire when they're like 65 and you're talking about a guy who's 41. He's got probably another 41 years in his life, if not more. Mm -hmm. Like telling him to stop doing what he knows his whole life is is a pretty, pretty hard thing to do. So. We also know that um, Zlatan is quite, you know, I want to say, I want to say egotistical, but not necessarily in a nasty way. In that he likes the records and he likes stuff like that. Um, yeah, you've got the fact that he could break three records next season. Um, Costa Curta um, for the oldest Serie A goal, he would break that if he scored next season. He could get um, his hundredth goal for the club as well. Yeah. Um, we need to make it past the group stages, but if he was to appear in the Champions League, he'd be the oldest ever player to do that. And if he was to score in the Champions League, he'd be the oldest Champions League goal scorer taking that record from Francesco Totti. So there's, you know, there are records to tumble here that are actually pretty big ones. Um, so maybe that might feed into it just a little bit as well. Um, I lost where I was. Okay, here we go. Uh, Thoughts on us playing this from Ian Marsh. Thoughts on us playing a back three at some point this season with Kalulu, Tamari, and Kier. Um, don't fix what isn't broken, would be my quick answer to that. Yeah, I mean, you're never going to see the lineup show a back three, but in game, you're going to see it often because of how we move. But it won't be the players mentioned. It'll You'll see someone like, well, last season we saw Kessie playing like left center back or right center back fairly often. Yeah, Tonali dropping between. Tonali, yeah. yeah. 
you're going to see players drop back from the midfield because the way Pioli's system works, it's, it's very much similar to Pep's Barca where he has the the fullbacks going inside and creating the space in the middle. You even heard Teo talk about it. He said, Pioli told me before the Atlanta game that all the space is down the center. And because he pushed on the center, you're going to be able to open things up out wide, which is where Liao is our, our main threat. So, and then go down the center, of course, he scored his coast to coast and, um, and he saw Calabria early goal in the, in the, the opening minute of that game. So, mm. I mean, yeah, I, the way it, we play, you're going to see players all over the field. You're never going to really know what like the on paper look is of it. Um, but yeah, we, we do everything. So a good headline. It was, it was, I think it was Gazetta uh, and they were actually talking about us playing potentially a three, four, three. Now I hate the three, four, three as mm-hmm. formation. Um, but the idea of us being chameleonic, and I like that, you know, we can shape shift based on the situation. And, and Pioli is very good at exploiting things that come up during games as well. So, yeah, I, I totally agree with you. I don't think we're ever going to um, nail down one formation because we're not like that. You know, we, we do have the fluidity. Mm-hmm. Um, there's another AJ, mate, that's trying to rival you on Milan oh. Twitter. This guy's called AJ, but his name is Hassan Abu Sheri. So, Abu Sheri, AJ, asks... Um, Tonali's injury brought back PTSD from our October to January stretch, which was full of injuries. Um, quality reinforcement, quality reinforcements needed thoughts. And I'll spin that as which central midfielder and which centre back would you like us to sign? Because Renato Sanchez is gone. Yeah, uh, I think we're fine. I know Pobega has had injuries already, um, and he you weren't the most keen on him, but I think Pobega is a, a solid choice in there. He's basically the Bakayoko replacement. And I think Adley is going to be our uh, Kessie replacement. I think he's going to be rotating with Tonali often anyways. I really think that that's going to, by the end of the season, be kind of the, the starting thing is him and Tonali each game, like like uh, Tonali, Benesser, and Kessie did. You know, they're just going to keep mm-hmm. doing their little rotating pivot um, because I think Adley will play better in that two-man midfield than he will um, as the attacking midfielder, which is a scary thought because he was fantastic in preseason as an attacking mid. Mm. Yeah, um, I, I, it does sound like we are going to try and sign another centre-back and another central midfielder, which does uh, fill me with a bit of confidence. Because as you say, I think Pabega numerically will be the um, back of Yoko replacement in terms of having someone there that we can actually use. Um, he's young, he can learn. I'm not keen on him as a third midfielder. Uh, as a fourth, I'd feel much better and if we signed someone decent for that third slot. Um, I like the Fratesi links. I think he'd fit in really well with our style of play, but I don't think we can pull that deal off with the budget that we've got remaining, unless we do some kind of loan with obligations. Not with how Sesuolo has been... been yeah, it, it, players it's a summer. tough ask. I mean, look, they, they bent over for Juve, for Locatelli and stuff, and I understand you know, people getting excited because Milan News and Di Marzio are saying that we're trying. Um, I think he'd be really good. He's a very, very good progressive ball carrier, um, and I think he'd be more of a direct replacement for Kessie than people realise. Um, but I, as I said, I don't think we can pull that off. I like Ibrahim Sangare from PSV, but again, I, I think his price tag is, is is elevated by the interest from Premier League clubs. And then there's a few names in there like Ibrahim Sissoko, um, Onya Diku, uh, I want to say, from Mittiland. Um, yeah, players that I just team. haven't seen enough of to, to comment yeah. on, really. But they do seem to follow a mould of being um, powerful midfielders from a physical point of view who are good at ball carrying. And I'm happy to see that because that's the one thing that we need. I do think we need a bit of dynamism in, in the midfield um, and someone with an engine. Seko Fafana is the one that I like the most of all the names. I thought he was really good at Udinese and he had a brilliant season for Lons last season. Again, I just don't think we have the money left over to pull it off at the moment. I think we're going to... This is not serious, actually. So I, I was going to say something and I was like, they're going to take this seriously. Um, but do as a anyway. joke, Brahim, position change. yeah. I, like that. I mean, yeah. to be fair, I do think he's gotten better with his ball handling. He's not getting pushed as much, at least in preseason. So he's not playing the top top guys. But, <laughs> you know, because mm. we kept saying his issue was, A, he was getting pushed over too easy, and B, his final third decision-making is abysmal. So you remove him from the final third, and now he has one issue. And I think he worked on it pretty well this summer. So well, maybe top. that's an option. Well, you know, Because he's not going to be attacking mid anymore. Well, he will be, but no. he's no. certainly not the starter. Well, there is rumours of him being tried on the right wing, so maybe I've finally got through to him. Um, yeah, um, what was the other one? Oh, yeah, centre-back. Please, if we've got a chance to get Evan and Dicker, then do it. Uh, I know it's tough, but God, he would be great. Um, and I'm just not that inspired by Diallo or Tanganga, as in, like, 
I, I don't think that that's a deal to push for right until the end. I think if yeah. they were a quick reinforcement, then you get them in. But um, I'm just, yeah, we definitely need another centre back for me uh, because that would allow Gabia to go on loan. And also, we don't know what Kier is going to be like coming back. Um, so I do think we need another centre back as well. Um, Dick would be great if we can get him on a cheapish fee, but I think we're working with a small budget after the CDK saga. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, El Nico asks, have you been into improve their squad more so than Milan so far this summer? Um, yes, but I think Milan's squad was already better by a, yeah. a big margin. So I think as in the gap might be reduced a bit, but overall it's still yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Like if their squad, you know, to, to simplify it, their reinforcements made their squad, you know, plus eight better. I think last season, and we went like plus two better. I think last season we were already plus 10 better. So, you know, it's just it shrinks the gap, but we're still better. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's hard to call at the moment. Um, as I say, to me, lose key pieces yet. Um, Juve a lot hinges on how Bremer replaces Delict and if Pogba re aggravates his injury and, and how Chiesa comes back as well. You know, people sort of guaranteeing that he'll be a 10 goal, 10 assist plus man. Um, but you don't know with a, with a with an injury like that. Um, I do think Inter on paper at the moment, as things stand, this very second have got better um, because they brought back Lukaku. Now, you know, the overarching narrative about it, like they're going to have to sell big players soon. Yes, they are. Lukaku's only on a loan. Yes, he is. Um, but, you know, they've still got a very competitive team. And I think it was actually hard for Juve to get worse, to be honest. But they have got better with Di Maria, with Pogba. Um, and De Ligt never really hit the heights that were expected of him, to be honest. So I think Bremer, um, it's hard for him to end up being much worse as well. But maybe if he keeps playing like he has been in pre-season, then... <laughs> He, he might end up doing that. All right, we'll end with a fun one from Gregory Peck. He's, he's labelled it a fun question, and it is. Um, if you guys, so I think he means me, you, and Maddie. Now, Maddie's left, so we could slag him off. Um, if you guys are on a night out, out of the group, who is the ladies' man, who's the wingman, and who is the guy most likely to get thrown out? Maybe we could open this up to the entire Sempre Milan crew, because obviously me, you, and Maddie are all taken. Yeah, um, I, honestly, so... I was going to name myself for all three positions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so... we just stood at the bar watching it all unfold. Yeah. I'd be the guy yeah. at the bar getting leathered um, at the end of the bar. Yeah, actually, Maybe you might be the one getting thrown songs. out. Yeah, because yeah. yeah. you'd be singing along and requesting Oasis all night. Or, no, we just and then don't do that here. you punch me, and we both get thrown out. <laughs> um, um, I definitely would, well, I don't want to say definitely because my girlfriend listens, mean. but I'd probably be the one, uh, I'd, be, I'd be doing the most bowling. But that um, was a, a past life. Um, it wouldn't be Isaac, that's for sure. No, I was just about to say um, about uh, Fred potentially being the, the ladies' man. Um, mm. You know, we've heard stories and stuff. Well, Fred's got a girlfriend too. I think actually, is is Isaac the only single one out of the whole team? Yeah, it probably is, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I Isaac... think that like any of us would be a candidate for wingman because I think we've given plenty of advice to Isaac over the last few weeks. <laughs> Just completely <laughs> airing his private life here. Yeah. Um, but, but maybe yeah. none of us are good enough because it clearly has yeah, to Yeah, maybe we're shit. Yeah, <laughs> maybe we're just tapping uh, merchants. Um, but yeah, that was a fun question. Uh, so cheers for that. Um, and yeah, that's it. Uh, this time next week, we'll be talking about some Syria action, some actual meaningful uh, games, which yeah. is great. Can't wait. I uh, always find it weird when the season starts and the window's still ongoing. Um, I know that you actually like that, and I'm mm -hmm. a bit like, Whoa. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to things getting up and running. Probably going to go to Milan Club London for the game, and also my birthday is the day after. So if they ruin my birthday, um, they'll be hell on. Um, but yeah, I've been your host, Ollie Fisher. You can find me on Twitter at Ollie Fisher. AJ, thanks for joining. Yep. Tor Fuck. No, you had Tor it right. 45. This is so much harder than it should be every week, but Torgan 45. Uh, That's what she there. said. And yeah, nice. And yeah, you can't find Madison anymore. He left us. Mm -hmm. yeah, also, I've had good. nights out with him, and I and he wouldn't be any of them because he literally sits back with his wife, or or won't go because she's not with us. So he wouldn't be in the equation at all. 
Always good to get a cheap shot in there right at the yep. end as well. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you to everyone who made it this far. Drop us your predictions uh, below. I'll do a pinned comment so people, you can like copy and paste it and all that. And yeah, enter the trivia. Um, check out our merch. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we will catch you in a week's time. Ante, ecco l'Anteante in area di rigore, Anteante, Anteante, Ibra, gol! Vediamo se è buono, ce l'ho da buono, ce l'ho da buono, ce l'ho da buono.